But isn't evolution just a theory? This idea stems from the way that scientists use language differently from the way it is normally used. Ordinarily, the word theory means a guess. But when scientists use it, they mean something much more precise. In science, a theory means a large group of linked ideas, which have a large amount of evidence to back them up. Proving that anything is a fact is obviously very difficult in science, and I think proving that evolution takes place is something that we can do in the laboratory, and we can show through artificial selection, through the breeding of domesticated strains of, of crops and uh, even of dogs, for example. We can show that within a species we can artificially select for a very broad range of traits. Um, so to show that evolution is a fact in that sense is fairly straightforward. To show that evolution has been responsible for the diversity of life on Earth is perhaps a slightly different question, and that's probably one that's more difficult to address. Perhaps the most famous evidence for evolution exists in the fossil record, where scientists have observed lineages of species slowly changing and adapting, such as the transition of fish as they crawled onto the land and became amphibians. Evolution is a fact partly because of the fossil record. We can go back to examine these wonderful uh, fish here, which are 350 million year old Devonian lungfish. This is corroborated by modern day repetitions of the same key evolutionary leaps. This mudskipper is a fish that has evolved the ability to leave the water. Many millions of years after the first fish did the same. Evolution is not a single line of organisms, but a branching structure with many changes happening separately and parallel to each other. The appearance of design is an illusion. While organisms may seem to be perfectly adapted, the facts usually indicate otherwise. Take the human eye for instance. While we may think of human eyes as sophisticated, they have in fact very flawed designs. The blood vessels at the back of the eyeball cover up part of the optic nerve. It's a bit like putting the wiring in a camera in front of the lens. As a result, all humans have a blind spot that we basically hallucinate out of our vision. The fossil record shows that, like fish leaving water, eyes have evolved more than once in history. Octopuses and squid evolved eyes separately from land animals and do not have these blind spots. This casts serious doubt about traditional views of creation. Indeed, what intelligent design theorists tend to keep quiet about is precisely what they deem to have created life on Earth. Looking objectively, there appear to be three choices. Life was created by entities from elsewhere in the universe. Life is in fact a computer simulation. Or life was created by God. It seems unlikely that most theorists would agree with the first two views. Viewed in this light, intelligent design can be seen for what it is, half science, warped to suit religious ideals. Supporters of intelligent design continually lobby governments to allow their ideas to be taught in schools, a clear breach of the separation of church and state. By imposing religion onto science, intelligent design helps to create a culture of ignorance, replacing time-tested scientific methods with superstition. Applying science to something like that is a total misnomer. The, the, science is a rather respectable enterprise and people have a tendency to attach the word science to all sorts of things which have absolutely nothing to do with science. Science is a way of finding out the truth about the way the world works, of doing experiments, collecting evidence and so on. Creationism isn't about that. Creationism is an assertion that the world is in a particular way and it's an untestable assertion and therefore these people are not actually scientists at all. Their way of operation is not scientific. Evolution has given humanity a greater understanding of how life works, and from that we have been able to make breakthroughs in many vital areas, combating viruses and other illnesses, breeding better varieties of crops and farm animals, predicting man's impact on the natural environment, and many more besides. Ignoring evolution means ignoring all of these. A good example would be the evolution of immunity to pesticides, for example, so perhaps rats becoming resistant to warfarin or perhaps um, MRSA, multiple resistant Staphylococcus aureus, the hospital superbug. The fact that it's moving forward rapidly through time and evolving to become resistant to antibiotics and we're having to catch up and understand more about the, the evolution of these traits to try and gain the upper hand in this conflict. I think one big change that evolution has made in people's attitudes is the way in which people relate to animals. 
Um, the religious tradition, the Ju Judeo-Christian tradition, has actually been rather nasty to animals. Animals are mechanistic things, they don't matter, they don't have souls in that sort of tradition. Uh, whereas human beings are up on a pedestal, they're really rather important, uh, and, and so on. And it doesn't really matter in that tradition, it wouldn't have mattered how you treated animals, and it didn't matter. Animals were treated really rather badly. Uh, nowadays, we worry a lot about animal welfare, and it's largely because of the fact that animals and humans are in the same pot together nowadays, thanks to evolu evolution theory. No, I don't think science and God are mutually exclusive. There are perfectly respectable scientists, particularly, I think, in the, in the physical sciences, who <coughs> believe in, 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 in God and believe in scientific understanding of the world about them. Um, they're not mutually exclusive, uh, there are different ways of looking at the world. Alternatively, you will find people who say that we don't need to invoke a supernatural explanation for the phenomena certainly we find in biology, but in the whole of science, and that to invoke God as an explanation is perhaps to, to miss the point of science. Science and God are by no means mutually exclusive. But asserting rigid dogma over the ever-changing and self-checking scientific process castrates science's ability to improve our lives. A future for both religion and rationality lies in adapting to the changing conditions of what we see in evidence all around us. It is only then that both areas can truly evolve. There are questions which science can't answer. I think the, the big question, the biggest question in the universe, is why there is something instead of nothing. Why does the universe exist at all in the first place? Science can't answer that? No way. Actually, theology can't answer it either. Because if you put God there to create the universe, you've got the next question, who put God there? There's clearly something we don't understand, something ultimate that we cannot understand. There's no way we can get a handle on it. There's no way we're ever going to understand it. If you want to call that God, that's fine. I don't think the two are incompatible. If you want to be theologically inclined, and plenty of scientists believe in God, you can believe that one of the most wonderful things God did was to design natural selection and set up a world in which selection generated the wonderful natural history that we have around us. That's absolutely fine by me, and it's possibly true.